And so what we recommend is that instead you use home server as a secure web proxy that will enable an authenticated user who is logged into the home server to have access to that, ser that service that's running inside the home. So what would that look like? Here we go. Imagine you have a remote laptop, it's connected to the internet, and using the channel, the dynamic DNS that's already created by Windows Home Server, you're going to type in a simple URL, and you're going to connect directly to IIS on the Windows Home Server. Now, if you're accessing a, a specific subsite that is being proxied to that service that's on another device, you could use a web proxy and proxy that communication directly to that device in a secure manner. And then obviously that device just returns back in the opposite direction. So to do that, you would need to do a couple things. You'll need to create a virtual route for the proxied site on Windows Home Server. You'd need to create and configure a reverse proxy. Then you obviously you want to add a link to the remote access homepage, just like we added a link for that thermostat page. Uh, for that thermostat uh, site on the home page. And you'll want to enable secure sign-on. So you won't want people to visit this site unless they've actually authenticated to the home server and they've signed on with their home server credentials. So if I flip back to my laptop, that's exactly what we've done on this machine. So this is that second home server I was mentioning, and it's running the Florence service. Let's check out the IIS root on this machine. Under remote, you see I've added a site called MFH. It was a code name that I picked for this little project. And inside of this folder, what I've done is I've taken the managed fusion project from CodePlex. It's available under the Microsoft Open License. And I've placed their DLLs in my bin folder here. Now, Managed Fusion just happens to be an implement, a clone of Apache Mod Rewrite, if you're familiar with Apache Mod Rewrite. So it's basically a ready-made web proxy that I've just used for this demonstration. And then I needed to do a couple things. One of them is I need to configure Managed Fusion to act as a proxy for my site. So what I've said is that if you rewrite the incoming URL that you receive and take off everything before remote slash MFH and then proxy that down to the website, which is running on port 999 on a different machine. Now, that sets up my proxy if you were doing this as a professional developer, you might use an open source project like I did here. You might instead choose to write your own implementation of a proxy. That's obviously a fine choice as well. But you just need to set up a virtual root that has a proxy inside of it. And then you're going to need to configure this site to work with our Windows Home Server single sign-on. To do that, it's, we have their standard asp.netweb.config file. And you'll notice inside of this file that we have, in system.web, we have your machine key. Right? And we have uh, specified a form for authentication. And that form points to the Windows Home Server logon page. Okay. This is, rather than try to figure out how to write this, I'll give you a quick hint. It's covered in the SDK. But if you go to the virtual route for our remote access website, which is at INET Pub Remote on every Windows Home Server, and you open that web.config, you'll notice that all of this data is already here. So if you just copy this little XML blob right into your site and modify the path for the logon URL to be relative to where you've sat your code, then Single sign-on is instantly enabled for your application. If the user signs into the remote access website, they're going to be signed into your web proxy's website. So now your web proxy will only be available if the user has previously signed in to the home server remote access. And lastly, 
when someone logs into remote access, you're going to want to advertise this site to them. Now, you probably don't want to advertise the site on the home page. This isn't a public service like I did with the thermostat. I didn't really care if someone plays with the temperature on stage here. Uh, rather, we also have another website.xml that is contained inside of the inetpub remote. And this website.xml has exactly the same format as the previous one, except that this one configures the links that are added to the remote access portal. And here what you see is I've given a that it will appear. So let's imagine that instead of being inside of my house, now I'm away from home. I visit my home server at cjshouse.homeserver.com. I click login. I log in with my local home server credentials that I use on all my computers inside of my home. And you can see that the Florence site is now advertised here in the remote access portal. And when I click this link, now that same rich Silverlight experience for browsing all of the media inside of my house is available to me from anywhere in the world outside my house. And all of the uh, requests that this Silverlight application makes are proxied. So you can see that the music streaming actually works. Can I get a little volume again? So all of these bits are being streamed straight through IIS right back out to my requesting web client. And it even works with videos. And I like videos just because it's a high bandwidth test here. Let's play a different video just for fun. Takes a second to buffer and then voila, you're watching a high definition video streaming to you from your Windows home server from anywhere in the world. So it's pretty freaking cool. All right. So I think that covers you know, some of the fun and games. Let me go back to my presentation. Go forward one more. There, there is one thing that you have to think about. If you have a product that runs as a, a website inside the house, you're probably doing a bunch of AJAX, especially if you're a Silverlight application. Clearly, you're making calls back to the server that you're talking to. There's one little hang up with this particular type of implementation, and that's that you have to be really hardcore about, not about using relative paths when you're making your AJAX requests. So if you don't look at the URL that's, uh, that your site is actually seems to be coming from and take it off and do all relative pathing when you make your requests, it's not going to work, right? Because you don't know where you're being proxied from. You might be at cjshouse.homeserver.com slash remote slash something else slash blah, 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 blah. And then that's where your website is. And when you're inside the house, that might just be uh, set top box slash remote, right? So you just need to be very careful in your AJAX that you're using relative paths. And that's pretty much as simple as it gets.